welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new, my name is Laurie and I live in Utah Gardening Zone 7A. Today I'm going to be doing a guard tour for my front yard for the month of September and I have a lot of changes that I've done especially to my front porch and my front little swoop area in preparation for fall. Well fall is here now. <laughs> it's actually here. So excited. But let's turn the camera around and show you my garden. I think we'll start out with the front porch here. I have some beautiful mums on here. I love pink and orange together and I think it came along so nicely. Fall is my favorite time to decorate the porch and I'm really happy with it. I wanted to put in some dark foliage next to these pumpkins just to add a little contrast and add a little contrast against my home, which is a creamy white. And then I wanted to do a dark plant to add a little contrast as well and I think it turned out really great. I did have some mums over here that I thought were orange and they bloomed and they were actually yellow <laughs> so I decided I really need to switch those out. So I switched those out and I wanted to of course grab one that was more butted up because you'll get more bloom out of them so it's not quite blooming yet but when it does it'll be really pretty to have that touch of orange in here too especially next to the pink mum over there. So pretty. Got these pills from Target. I have links in that video of my porch makeover that you can see. So that is my fall porch and it's been really fun. And then as we back out and come here you can see I matched the front to be the same. And I did come in here and pull out my annuals completely last week and then added a few sprinkle of pansies. I'm going to come in here and do a lot of bulbs but I switched out those mums that were <laughs> supposed to be orange that were yellow out here and I kind of like that look a little bit better. I can't remember what I was saying because I got interrupted but I think I was saying it'll it gives it a more cozy feel to have those dark orange instead of the bright yellow. I just don't like bright yellow. I'm, I'm really picky about my yellows. This makes me feel a little more fallish. <laughs> I think it turned out turned out pretty good. I'm still learning. I definitely need more stuff up here. I need more height. I need something up there. I know I do, but I need to figure out what that is. So I need to make plans for that. There's always something to plan for. We're coming here this next week when it cools down. It's been 90 degrees, but when it cools down in the 70s, I'll come and trim up these boxwoods. I do like my boxwoods round, but I like them a little furry. Not this furry, but kind of... <laughs> A little bit free. I don't like to do them tight because I feel like that's too much maintenance and it looked it looks a little more formal and I'm kind of not formal and maybe semi-formal in some areas and more cottagey in others so that's what I like to do. So this tree's bouncing back which is good. It got a little hot this summer but I think it's going to be fine. One of you said I probably need to raise it up a little bit to let the roots breathe and I probably will come in here when I plant my tulips and and just help it there's a lot of mulch around it, so I think I just need to move some of that away, but it seems to be doing better. Okay, so this English lavender is doing fantastic. Love this here. I need to figure out things to block this whole area right here, and someday I'll figure out a new hose that isn't so such an eyesore. I came in here and planted these blue Skywalker Veronica, and they were so beautiful, and they're gonna be beautiful next year not much else. My comb flowers always seem to get tired and haggard at the end. What am I doing wrong? Are they getting too much water? Someone tell me. <laughs> they just always end up doing that and I don't know why. But not much else to do here. I do like this kind of ledge here because in the fall it's really pretty with this grass but this area needs something. But look how pretty it looks right now. Some of them died out. They were kind of all in a row, but I lost a few here. But that's this side swoop. Let's make our way to the other side of the front. My hibiscus did a beautiful job. Still blooming, which is kind of crazy because it's been blooming since the end of July. <laughs> we got one more flush out of these. So fun. This is the Starry Starry Night hibiscus and the Superbina Pink Cashmere next to it. Stunning. Look at that. And I am so glad I switched out the Limelight Prime for the regular Limelight because that's what I had over here. And they're definitely different and I like these a lot better. I also moved these flocks and they're struggling a little bit, but I did notice they're kind of coming back down here. So I think they should be okay. <laughs> they were a little stressed when I moved them. And then I planted some more Blue Skywalker Veronica here. So that will be pretty with that 
backdrop, but look how much these just glow. I feel like these glow so much better than the Limelight Prime. The Limelight Prime are the improved version, I think, at least the stronger version. They're not quite as floppy, but I don't mind a little bit of floppiness. They're still pretty strong, but what I really love is how massive their blooms are and how bright they are. They just glow. They just are stunning. Can't wait for next year because they're going to be even bigger. Not much else to show here. I did kind of leave the lemon coral sedum and it is kind of changing this orange color that it does a little bit in the fall. And I left this diamond snow and this adriatum. My daisies have a little bit of flush again. My garage is open. <laughs> That's okay. And yeah, these are starting to turn a little more pink as we're getting a little colder. So pretty. Love them. And then I really love the Tutti Frutti fruit, fruit Punch something. <laughs> something, but it, it turns more pink for sure. So pretty. And it's a mini one, so it doesn't get super huge. I think this is the perfect spot for it. Last year it scorched quite a bit, and this year it handled the sun really, really well. Okay, so that's it for this. Not much else to show. Let's go to this next corner over here. I have this lovely meter here. <laughs> <laughs> so I planted this grass. Unfortunately, it won't give me any coverage here in the winter, but I do like that it will be tall enough in the summer and fall. And then this is pretty. I can't remember the name of this, but I love these purple flowers that it brings, and it just got massive this year. It's its third year, and look at that. It's huge. <laughs> and then this is my Olivia Austin rose. This is its first year. It's trying to bloom. It's got a few blooms in it yet, but yeah, I'm very impressed with how well this did for its first year. This was not a bare root, but the nursery did tell me they planted bare roots in the greenhouse in the winter and grew them, and they were pretty big when they came out, and they're about the same size as some of my bare root roses, maybe a little bit bigger, so I don't know. I think bare root roses are worth it. I think they do just as well, and they're a little bit cheaper, but it's nice to kind of get that instant rose, and you get more flowers out of it for sure but this one's really beautiful. Yeah, and the juga is filling in nicely. Let's go over to my garden and then I'll work my way back to the front. Okay, so over here in my garden area, I am so happy with this area. <laughs> so happy with how it turned out. I love these dahlias. They're so gorgeous and I just discovered there's different colors of these and I didn't know that. <laughs> I love the yellow though, even though I'm not a huge yellow person. I have loved the yellow. I had some zinnias here that just planted themselves or reseeded themselves from last year. And these pale yellow ones are my favorite. Look how pretty that is. Oh, I want to save some seeds of that. So hopefully it will dry out before then so I can. But yeah, loving this combination. I have the jazzberry. This isn't jazzberry, but it's very close. I don't know what brand it is. Probably just like a wave petunia. And these two are jazzberry and they both did really well actually. I did have some aphids in here so I came and sprayed some Captain Jacks, but I think they're doing fine. I just didn't want to get it to get too crazy. I probably should come in here and spray again. I don't know if you can see them or not. But I love the Angelonia, the marigolds, the jazzberry with that dark foliage in the background against the White House. It's just so stunning with the zinnias that just kind of popped in have been such a fun treat too. Tomatoes are looking a little sad, but they've done a lot of hard work. <laughs> I got so many tomatoes off of these and we made salsa the other day. That video will probably come up after this tour, but all the tomatoes are taken down and I'm tired. <laughs> we made a hundred bottles of salsa. <laughs> it's the best salsa in the world. I think we're gonna give it out for Christmas though. That's why we made so much. And there's three of us between all my sisters. So it'll, it'll get eaten, <laughs> but so pretty, love this combo. I'm kind of excited to see what I'm going to do here next year. I'm going to leave these dahlias in and hopefully they'll do well. I've had other dahlias in this area come back, so I have high hopes for it, but let's just all pray that they do. Let's get one more look at these pink flowers up here, these pink zinnias, because I loved them with the yellow so much. Look at that. Oh my goodness. 
I'm going to miss it. Stunning. Okay, so let's see how our dahlias over here did. There's a lot of orange going on here, which is okay. Orange is my second least favorite color. Oh my gosh, guys. <laughs> they scare me every time. They're literally hanging out everywhere. Oh my gosh. And then all of a sudden they're just staring at you. <laughs> scares me every time. But I'm gonna leave this dahlia in. I think it's pretty. I'll leave this one in because I do like the pinky coral color. So pretty. I don't know what variety it is. This one I bought from Lowe's or Home Depot, I can't remember. And it's pretty, but I'm not gonna keep this one. I thought this was gonna be a light peach. That's what the picture said, or looked like. And then this one, I don't know what it's gonna be. I'm hoping I get to see it. They've been so slow this year, and I got them in a little later this year too. And I'm guessing it's not gonna be what I think it is because that's how they always are when you get them from Home Depot and Lowe's, I've just learned. And so I am gonna put some pretty dahlias in here that I love, and I'm gonna order some tubers and plant them on time next spring <laughs> and get the varieties that I want. I really want to try out, are they pom-pom, pom-pom dahlias? I need to do more research on dahlias this year, but I want this to be my little dahlia garden still. I think it's pretty inside the house and it's pretty outside the house. And I think it's fun to have it right next to the garden, which is really just a tomato garden because it's usually all I plant. And so I'm gonna keep it the same, but I'm gonna put in some nice varieties that I actually really love. I'm probably gonna pull out these strawberries this year because this is their third year and I could tell they just didn't produce as much. So we'll see, I might put a new variety in there and, and try out something different. Raspberries have been working hard and giving me lots of berries and it's been so nice. My trellis fell down <laughs> again. <laughs> so they're a little floppy, but it's fine. They're getting a little tired. I'm gonna have one more round. I actually made raspberry jam with them and a yummy raspberry treat. And so I think that video will probably come up after this as well. So that's something else to look forward to. I've been doing a lot of harvesting. Um, so yeah, that's coming soon. Let me tell you a story about these raspberries though. <laughs> I just tasted one and it reminded me. I came in here and I was just eating berries. You know, I pulled a couple off, started eating them. And then a crunch, oh my gosh, there was a little beetle on one and I crunched it and ate it. It was so gross, you guys. <laughs> I like screamed and spit it out. And yeah, that was, that was bad. So now I always check and make sure. But I'm just gonna have a few more raspberries. I need to come out and pick more. Yum, love raspberries. And then let's talk about this Molino Rose. It is non-stop, you guys. You can see all the other ones have kind of done their job. The own looks pretty good too, the pink one next to it. But this one always has roses on it. It's so stunning. Don't forget about this rose. I feel like it's a little bit older. I think it came out in like 2001, but don't forget about it. <laughs> it's so beautiful. And as it gets cooler, it gets a little more orange in it. I have a rose garden tour you can check out on my channel that talks about all my roses, but um, usually in the fall I come back and give a cut back <laughs> and I was a little late to the game this year and I didn't want to do it a couple weeks ago because that was too late in the season I didn't want them to have new growth that would just die so I'm kind of waiting for that first frost to come and once that comes then I can come and cut back anything that's super long not a hard cut back I'll come and do that in the spring but you can come back get any branches that might get snow on them and bend them and break them so I'll I'll cut them down a little bit. So I'm just kind of waiting for that. And I'm also gonna come in here and put these on my trellis here, these long stems. So I'm just kind of letting those grow out. This rose really suffered this year <laughs> with spider mites. Oh, it was a disaster. Just this molino, it's so pretty. I really loved my Gabriel Oak this year as well. Right now it doesn't have as many flowers on it, but I'll put a video in here of the flowers that it did have. And it's so pretty. I'm so happy I added a darker pink rose. I definitely want more dark, rich colors because I don't have a lot of those. Here's a little bloom from the Tranquility, the white one I have here. Let's check out the Almlick. We passed those right up. One of my favorite roses. Look how beautiful. So pretty. Love that rose. Oh my gosh. 
And then we'll check out the blooms on this questionable flower. I thought it was James Galloway. That's what the tag was. I thought it was a climber. Everyone tells me it's Olivia Austin. I still am not quite sure, but whatever it is, it's stunning. But I want to know if it's a climber because I want to know if I should put a trellis up here. <laughs> I don't know if I'll get time to moving it in the fall here, but I'll probably do it in the spring. We'll see. I'm running out of time, you guys. But this is my rose garden and I want to add more. <laughs> I'm loving them. And then this is the aster that I have. Look at this plant. <laughs> that is not October. I don't know what it is. It's an aster plant and actually I don't really like it. It's a monster. The dark purple I'm not a fan of, although it is kind of fun this time of year. But it just does so well. I just can't get rid of it right here. Because as you can see, a lot of plants struggle right here. I think they get too much water because they get the overspray from here and then they get the grass spray here and so I think that's what my issue is my plumbago has done okay and I'll look at that closer here in a second but this one just does well <laughs> so I'm like maybe I'll plant more of that here's the plumbago yeah as you can see it's just not doing that great but look how pretty it is it always gets that red foliage this one's doing a little bit better down here but absolutely stunning plant I have this in parts of my backyard as well and it gets this gorgeous red color in the fall and usually it's just this green with the purple. Let's check this corner over here. We have this Eustacia guy rose. Let's see how it's doing. I haven't checked on this in a while. This has some crazy thorns. Let me show you guys. Look at these wicked thorns. <laughs> just so you know that about it. It looks a little sad. But it's okay what a pretty bloom anyway see how this is kind of dying and drying a little bit i think there might be bugs in there or something you need to look at it but this is a bare root rose look how big it got i'm very happy with that bare root rose so is the gabriel oak one that i showed the dark pink one so can you imagine what it's going to do next year love it lamium in here that i need to spread around more and then my spirea is blooming love it love it this time of year you definitely want to come and cut it back once it blooms, so you get another show of blooms. Sometimes I can get three if I stay on top of it, but I love spirea so much. You do have to put iron on ours, or they suffer a little bit. This one's suffering a little bit because it needed iron and a little water, but when they are happy, they're very, very, very pretty. And then daylilies I might get rid of here soon. <laughs> Not my favorite. And these, I'll put the name on the screen. I finally figured it out, but I can't remember what it is love them i even love the little pom-poms i used to cut them back and i've kind of just decided to leave them because i don't want to keep up on all the maintenance and i love it so pretty okay that's it thank you so much for watching my front garden tour for september i'll see you guys next time bye <music>